Hi, I'm Riley with KSG Armory Holsters. Today in this video, I'm gonna walk you through your new KSG Armory holster, its various options, upgrades, and generally to help you be the most successful you can be with using your new KSG Army holster. When you buy your new KSG Army holster, it should arrive in a package just like this. So this is gonna serve also as a little bit of an unboxing. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this new one out for a Smith & Wesson MMP 2.0 and this is how they will generally arrive. Um, if yours came with a holster wedge, that's what you're gonna find there. We'll come back to that momentarily. And you should always find in every KSG Army purchase a little packet that's gonna have some Vibratite VC3 thread locker. All right, that's so that you, after you've dialed everything in, if you choose to, you wanna make sure you don't have anything come apart with your holster, you can go back and add a little bit of thread locker to the various screws in the holster to ensure they stay put. And you'll also find, for those of you that chose the mod wing attachment for your holster, which is probably most of you, it's certainly the attachment that we recommend for wings or claws, uh, you should have the other half of that because there's two different heights that come with each of those mod wing attachments. So typically they ship with the shorter attachment in place and this has got the longer one in that packet. So set that aside. So this is what we call the standard configuration. This is how many of our holsters ship out of the warehouse, meaning they come with a predetermined length. It's usually about what we recommend for about 90 plus percent of concealed carriers as far as the optimal length of a holster. Obviously that's gonna be based also upon the actual gun you select at the time of checkout. And it'll also ship with a mod wing for the wing here, as well as a DCC or discrete carry concepts monoblock for the belt attachment. Both very fine options. The DCC monoblock is like a single clip, but with two, meaning there's some redundancy built in there. You're never gonna have this just slip off your belt throughout, during the course of wearing a KSG Army holster throughout the day with this particular attachment. It's also adjustable for ride height, is we have on our holster a, a unique feature, is what we call the clip grid, which allows you to adjust that monoblock or several of the other attachment options up, down, a little bit to the side, left and right, if you need to move it just a little bit one way or the other to avoid maybe a pant loop or something. And also you can adjust this for a little bit for a cant. You've got a, about three different options. You can go with a forward cant, a neutral cant, or a reverse cant, but just by rotating that clip on the clip grid system itself. So this is the standard configuration for a KSG Army holster. As you can see, the holster itself is ambidextrous. If you need to reverse the hardware for any reason, and we certainly have seen this from a few folks where perhaps they have, say, a rotator cuff surgery or something on their dominant arm, and so then they need to carry and maybe do some practice with their non-dominant hand if they wanna continue being able to carry and defend themselves while they're recovering from that surgery. Well, that's a nice feature of these holsters is because you can reverse everything that comes in the standard configuration, the monoblock, the mod wing, uh, wing. you can flip those around to the other side here and run this left-handed if you are normally right-handed. Or perhaps you're an ambidextrous sort of fellow and that's how you wanna roll. So that is a standard configuration. Let me walk you through a couple other options here and kind of show you how they work uh, and also different adjustments that you can do with them. So another popular option, actually I turn this way, this is my personal holster for my VP9SK. It is unloaded and clear. We're gonna go ahead and set that aside. You can see it's got a barrel block installed. But it's quite popular for folks to order the Lexington holster, that's what this model is, with two DCC Mod 4 clips, or on our website we refer to them as DCC slotted clips, or canted clips. So as you'll see here that there's one variety that allows the angle of the clip to be adjusted for cant, and there's this style which doesn't allow any adjustment for cant as far as the clip itself, but you can change a little bit of the ride height with these clips that I'm using here. So they generally are gonna run in a vertical orientation, and then we can adjust that ride height a little bit up and down. Uh, you can get a little bit of cant adjustment by offsetting one clip from the other, but you can't go too far before things start binding up on the belt. So uh, this is the DCC Mod 4 Universal Clip, and you'll see that they mount on these lower holes here, as well as on the same holes that the Mod Wing is attached 
too. There is a small plastic spacer that's required for these to work optimally. If you ever end up taking this apart, please pay careful attention to how this is all arranged because you want that mod wing on the holster first, then the spacer, then the clip on top of that. If you try to mount these clips without the spacer, you're gonna have some problems. Also, we generally recommend for most folks in most situations to run the shorter mod wing attachment piece with the DCC clips. That's how they're gonna ship from the factory here. Um, but occasionally the taller piece may be appropriate. Just know that it does increase tension that it's placing on the holster and can in some instances lead to some premature cracking. Um, that's something that you'll need to decide for yourself if you just need that extra little bit of grip tuck. That's something to look at. Speaking of grip tuck, that it really is. Here's another version of a holster with a light bearing version of the mod wing. Same concept though, they, it's still gonna come with a low and a high attachment piece for it. And now if you are not familiar with why you would use one of these wing attachments or sometimes referred to as a claw, here is why. So there's a couple of things, and this is your first lesson in getting maximum success from using your new KSG Armory holster. There's a couple of variables when we're talking about carrying a holster, particularly in the appendix position and doing it not only comfortably, but also successfully as far as the actual concealment is concerned. There's really two issues we're trying to address. Number one is how much we can rotate the grip of the handgun into the body. I can demonstrate that here with my own. So typically one of the big things that people have a hard time concealing or hiding on them is the actual grip of the pistol itself. That's the whole point of these mod wing attachments is that applies pressure on the back side of the pants and belt, which helps torque that grip into the body. So the taller that this attachment piece here is that is used, the more grip rotation we're going to get. Sometimes you should be aware though, if we go too much with that, that it can over rotate the upper portion of the pistol, cause things like the sights or the rear corner of the slide or an optic in the case of optic users and have where you get the grip to no longer print, but maybe now this portion of the pistol is over rotated and is now printing. In which case we may wanna experiment with going back down to using one of the smaller wing attachment pieces. But that's the whole purpose of the wing or claw attachment is so that we can deal with trying to adjust this rotation on the body so that it, we can conceal this portion of the gun primarily more successfully. The other thing that we're looking to adjust with respect to how this gun conceals on our body is how much it is angled in or out to the body like this. So sometimes we have a holster that kind of does this where the, not just the grip, but the whole gun and holster is sort of pu pushing out and away from the body. So how are we gonna deal with, it, with that? Well, that's where things like these wedges come into play. This is the tall angled wedge, or the long angled wedge, excuse me. And this, and they come with the Velcro pre-attached for you to attach that yourself onto the holster. Just make sure the surface of the holster is dry and clean when you do that. But I can take, this is the short angled wedge and place that on there. After a day or two of wearing this, you're gonna see this will start to conform both to the holster itself as well as to your body and create essentially a custom fit for you and your gun. But by placing that on there, this will now interface with the portion of the body below the belt and help push all this back in closer to me and help overall conceal the upper portion of the gun better. The nice thing about these closed cell foam wedges that we manufacture is that they also increase the comfort for most people as well. Be mindful that too much wedge can also be its own issue. And the other thing that we sometimes see is folks will choose the long angled wedge and they'll try to pair that with a relatively short gun and or holster. And while this will still add some thickness at the bottom of the holster, it also adds some thickness at the top portion of the holster, including where the belt is. And that's just increasing overall thickness period, which is less desirable. So most times we want one of the shorter angled wedges that you'll see the wedge itself sits below where the belt would be. So we're not necessarily increasing the width of the holster at the top and we are adding it where we want it, which is below the belt. So the only time we really recommend using these longer wedges is on the really, really long holsters like Glock 34 length. So like for holsters that are made for guns with barrels of like five inches or longer, generally is where these are gonna come in handy. For almost everything else, these shorter wedges are usually the right choice. 
Here's another interesting thing about using the wedges. Don't just think that it's only one way you can use it. This, the nice thing with the Velcro is you can reposition this any which way. You can move it a little bit left and right, up and down. You can even change the angle of it. I've even seen some people that have done this, which works together with getting a little bit more tuck one way or the other with the grip. So there's a lot of different ways we can position that wedge, perhaps even upside down, might be effective for you. You never know. This is something for you to play around with and find the best combination for you. Now let's talk about retention on our holsters. This is a little bit more specific to our Lexington line of holsters because all of those are adjustable retention. What you'll find is that the two screws holding on the wing or claw attachment are your retention screws. Uh, inside here in this little gap, there are two rubber washers. They're compressed under pressure. These have been sized specifically to provide the right amount of tension, uh, but still allow adjustability and flexibility in the holster as the gun is inserted and removed from it. So one thing I'd recommend is making adjustments in small increments, typically like maybe a quarter to a half turn at a time. And it's usually recommended as well that if you adjust one screw, I would adjust the other screw the same way. Try not to get these two totally out of whack where you know one of these is backed out a long ways and the other one's tightened down really tight. Uh, you generally want these working together and close to about the same amount of tension being applied to each of them. You can have a little bit of variance, but I sometimes see hol holsters that come back from customers and they've got you know one really cranked down tightly and the other one quite loose or vice versa, and that's just not ideal. And sometimes might be explaining why they're having fitment issues or retention issues, things of that nature. But uh, these are your two retention screws. Just adjust them little by little, play around with it until you get the retention to the level of friction that you desire. I've got mine dialed in here where I really like it. Also don't forget that it's actually important to check that retention not only here with the gun and holster outside your pants, but check it inside your pants because by placing this inside your waistband, you're going to increase that pressure there a little bit more. And that's going to change the retention characteristics. A little bit of a tedious process at times to you know, put it on, check it, take it off, adjust, put it back on, check again. You may do that a few times, but it's worth it to get everything dialed in exactly where you need it. All right, now I'm gonna come back to and discuss some of the other hardware attachment options. We talked about the DCC Mod 4 Universals or the slotted clips here, as well as the DCC Mod 4 Universal canted clips that you see here. One of the reasons why, if you look at many of our holsters and the way they are manufactured, is there's two holes here which are used for the wing attachment. And there's oftentimes three holes over here and they're offset from these two holes. That's an intentional design choice. The reason why that exists is so that you can use these canted clips and you'll mount one slightly higher than the other and then angle them and that you'll see that that brings them in line when it's in that canted position. And that's, that's how that works. But you'll see, you know, if I straighten these out, now those aren't going to work very well together. If I wanted to reverse cant, I would position this clip down in the lower holes and angle them this way, and then that would bring them in line so they would work with the belt. All right, now, a lot of times these are gonna ship with a mod wing still attached. That's so that we get that extra spacer distance as well. And also because some users like to still use a claw or wing attachment piece on this as well. Generally not recommended with the canted clips being used in a traditional on or behind the, the hip uh, inside waistband configuration uh, because there's, it's just gonna make it a lot more difficult for you to actually put this onto your belt. But a few people have had success doing that. So we provide that option to you. So there's really no harm to that mod wing attachment remaining on the holster, even when used in this kind of traditional IWB location with these canted clips. All right, so now another thing, sometimes folks want a little bit more nuanced cant adjustment with those DCC canted clips. Uh, th those are perfect times to utilize perhaps just one of these clips. You can leave the clip attached to just one, two of these three holes here, and you can get a little bit more nuanced cant adjustment. It's gonna retain on the belt just fine. You will note that there'll be a little more play in how the holster sits and rides when you use just a single clip, but many people do it with success. So something to be aware of and to experiment with if you're trying to get a little bit more specific or dialed in cant adjustment. 
All right, now let's look at another popular hardware or belt attachment option, and that is the soft loops that you see on this one here. Uh, these are still a very popular option. These you'll see are mounted directly to the clip grid. Uh, and so again, as you can do with the monoblock attachment, you can adjust the right height of these individually as well as together to change overall right height or to also add a little bit of cant to the holster with the soft loops as well. There is one more configuration where you can pair the soft loops with struts. They're actually tuckable struts. And if you want the maximum adjustability in terms of ride height and cant and all of that, then actually the way to go is with the soft loops with tuckable struts. Uh, that's an option on the website as well. So check that out if you're looking for the maximum adjustability possible with one of our KSG Armory holsters. And that's the cool thing though with the way we design our holsters. It gives you many options. The, the idea there being is we want our customers to be able to adjust the holster and customize it to their individual use in the way that they see fits them best. So all the options, try to think of everything ahead of time with the design of these holsters. Now, one final thing. Um, most of our holsters ship out of the factory in what we call the mid-height sweat guard configuration. That's what this is, or what you'll see here on my personal holster. So both sides will be cut the same in that mid-height sweat guard length. So there you go. But a few folks like to choose a full-height sweat guard length. That's fine. Um, just know that you're going to see that one side will typically be shorter than the other unless you choose full height with ambidextrous configuration.